In the enigmatic realm where the supernatural converges with the tangible, certain objects have gained notoriety for harboring inexplicable and eerie energies. From ancient artifacts with dark histories to seemingly ordinary items that have become conduits for the supernatural, the world is home to a plethora of objects said to be haunted or cursed. One of the most famous cursed objects is the renowned Hope Diamond. Weighing an impressive 45.52 carats, this massive blue-violet diamond supposedly first originated from the Kohler mine in Golconda, India. Myth has it that Jean Baptiste Tavernier, a jeweler who traveled the world between 1640 and 1667 searching for unique jewels and gems, stole this jewel from the eye, or forehead, of a statue of the Hindu goddess Sita, unleashing a terrible curse. Tavernier would end up being torn apart by wild dogs, some say wolves, while on a trip in Russia. This set the stage for a series of ill-fated events for subsequent owners or those who came into contact with it. For example, King Louis XIV, who bought the stone from Tavernier, died of gangrene, and all of his legitimate children died in childhood, except for one. Nicolas Fouquet, who worked for King Louis XIV, is said to have worn the diamond for a special occasion, only to fall out of favor with the king and eventually be sentenced to life imprisonment. Fouquet spent 15 years in the fortress of Pignerol, with some believing him to be the real man in the Iron Mask. Other owners and wearers included Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and Princess de Lamballe, who all met a tragic end during the French Revolution. Henry Philip Hope, from whom the diamond's namesake was derived, saw his family quickly go bankrupt after owning it. Evelyn McLean, another owner who constantly wore it, faced a series of tragedies, ranging from the death of her mother-in-law to the loss of her son at the age of nine, the abandonment by her husband, who later became insane and was admitted to a mental hospital, the death of her daughter from a drug overdose at 25, and eventually, Evelyn herself passed away owing huge debts. Be why the time it reached Harry Winston, he took no chances. He donated the diamond to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History in 1958, but the curse even ended up affecting the delivery man, James Todd. Shortly after delivering it to the museum, he had a series of mishaps, including his leg being crushed in a truck accident, a head injury from a separate accident, and his house burning down. Though it's believed that after being placed at the museum, the curse has abetted, there are still whispers of ghostly activity within the museum, with objects moving, people feeling nudged or pushed, and sightings of a large figure of a man with no face wandering the premises. Two men hired to clean it were said to die shortly afterward. Another diamond, not as famous as the Hope Diamond but arguably equally cursed, is the Koinur Diamond. Koinur means, Mountain of Light, and this diamond certainly deserves this name by being a whopping 105 carats. Allegedly stolen from a statue of the god Krishna sometime between the 12th and 14th centuries in India, the curse dates back to a Hindu text from 1306, he who owns the diamond will own the world but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God, or a woman, can wear it with impunity. As such, the curse seems to only affect men. Men who came into possession of the diamond soon lost their empires to war or met violent ends. The Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan, who built the Taj Mahal, put the Kohinoor into his throne and was promptly imprisoned by his son, marking the start of a violent family power conflict. The Persian Shah who gave it its modern name was also assassinated not long after recovering the precious stone. Since the reign of Queen Victoria, the Kohinoor diamond has been owned by the British royal family, who, despite the curse, have traditionally willed the diamond to the male heir to the British throne. Moving away from cursed diamonds, the next haunted object is known as the woman from Lem or the, the Goddess of Death statue, currently housed in the Royal Scottish Museum. Unearthed in Lem, Cyprus in 1878, the statue was dated to 3500 BCE and is carved from pure limestone. No one really knows what the statue is for or what it represents although some suggest that it represents an unknown fertility goddess. But it is the effect this statue has on its owners which has caused concern. Legend has it that anyone who owns the statue will die. It is known that there have been four families who have owned the statue before it was donated to the museum. 
The first owner was Lord Elfond who had all seven members of his family die within the six years he had the statue. Ivor Minucci was the second owner and within four years of having the statue, he and his entire family died. The same situation happened to Lord Thompson Noel's family. They all died within four years of owning the statue. The statue later found its way to Sir Alan Biverbrook and he and his wife and two daughters also died. The two surviving sons of the family wisely decided to donate the statue to the museum. Even a museum curator died within a year of handling the statue. Next, let's turn our attention to Busby's stoop chair, also known as Dead Man's Chair. The chair was initially placed in a local pub and was frequently occupied by Thomas Busby, known for his quick temper and illicit activities. Busby was, for some unknown reason, deeply attached to this object. He would fly into fits of rage when anyone else dared to sit in his favorite seat. In one instance, Busby attacked and almost choked to death one of the inn's guests who refused to move away from the chair. Thomas Busby was arrested in 1702 for murdering his father-in-law, Daniel Audie. Busby, a local clothier, had married Daniel Audie's daughter, Elizabeth. The young married couple moved into the apartments above Audie's farm. Busby and Audie had been working together on a coin counterfeiting scam as well as other illegal operations. Their relationship was rocky, and at some point, the two men got into a lethal argument. Some say it was about their business, as Busby wanted to take over the entire operation, while others claim it had to do with Audie's disapproval of the marriage between Busby and his daughter. Busby was also deeply angered because Audie had sat in his oak chair and had threatened to destroy it. That night, Busby drank for hours before breaking into Audie's house and murdering the man. Though he hid the body, his wife, Elizabeth, later told the authorities what her husband had done. He was arrested shortly after, went to trial, and was then condemned to execution by hanging. His last request before hanging was to have a last ale on his favorite chair at the pub, but it was said that people heard him proclaim that sudden death would come to anyone who dared sit in his chair. Thomas Busby was hanged at the Sandhutton Crossroads, North Yorkshire, United Kingdom. The inn later changed its name to the Busby Stoop Inn. The area where Busby was executed is said to still be haunted by his ghost centuries later. This area, now a roundabout, is located on the A61 and A167 crossroads. Since his death, the chair has been attributed to many deaths, as almost everyone who sits on Busby's chair ends up dying. During World War II, several Canadian airmen from the nearby base at Skipton-on-Swale who sat in the chair never returned from their bombing missions over mainland Europe. According to reports, their planes were shot down or crashed under mysterious circumstances. The pilots' bodies were never found. However, it wasn't until the 1970s that fatal accidents were directly linked to the curse of Busby's stoop chair. For example, a roofer who sat in the chair fell to his death the following day, a cleaning lady who stumbled and fell into the chair was later found dead a couple of weeks later from a brain tumor no one even knew she had, a delivery man who couldn't resist the allure of the chair died in a car crash that same day. These series of unfortunate deaths led to its eventual removal from the inn and its placement in the Thirsk Museum in 1978. Today, Busby's stoop chair is still housed in the Thirsk Museum. Due to the chair's deadly reputation, the decision was made to suspend the chair from the ceiling to prevent anyone from sitting on it. Visitors to the museum have reported various paranormal experiences in the object's close proximity, including a feeling of unease or dread when near the chair or feeling a cold chill. There are also accounts of visitors seeing the ghost of Thomas Busby near the chair. These sightings often describe a figure resembling Busby, appearing to guard the chair or even sitting in it. One of the most famous haunted objects is the Dybbuk Box, for which a book was written in 2011 and a movie, one of three about the Dybbuk Box, produced in 2012, The Possession. In Jewish mythology, a dibbuk is a malicious spirit believed to be the lost soul of a dead person that possesses the living. The word dibbuk comes from an ancient Hebrew word meaning to cling. Therefore, a dibbuk box is supposedly an object where a spirit has chosen to cling onto and remain until it is released from its bondage. 
The story goes that Manus purchased an old wine cabinet from the granddaughter of a recently deceased Holocaust survivor named Havila, who was 103 years old at the time of her death. Havila, who escaped Nazi-occupied Poland, had almost all of her family killed. She, along with other survivors, fled to Spain and lived there until the end of the war. Havila immigrated to the U.S., bringing the wine cabinet, one of only three items she brought with her. The granddaughter purportedly told Manus it was never to be opened since a Dybbuk lived within it, or bad things would happen. He did not heed her warning. Manus, who was in his mid-thirties at the time, took the box back to his shop with plans to restore it and give it to his mother for her birthday. After opening the cabinet, he found a series of strange objects inside. Two U.S. wheat pennies dating to 1925 and 1928, two locks of hair, a dried rosebud, a four-legged candlestick, a golden wine cup, and a granite sculpture inscribed with the Hebrew word Shalom. The Shema, a prayer considered one of the most important in Judaism, was carved on the back of the cabinet. One day, when he left the shop to run an errand, he received a call from his frantic salesperson that someone was in the shop swearing and smashing things. Manus returned to find the lights in the basement broken and the room filled with the stench of cat urine. The employee left and never came back. When he gave the box to his mother, his mother had a sudden stroke and lost her ability to speak. Over the course of two years, a number of other mysterious events befell Manus and those around him. His sister became creeped out by the cabinet because the doors kept opening on their own, his brother and his sister-in-law complained of odd smells coming from the box, like cat urine and jasmine. Manus and his siblings suffered from the same recurring nightmares of an old woman with sunken eyes, and Manus would awake with bruises and marks on his body from being beaten in the dream. He started seeing shadowy creatures in his home. And most disturbingly, he says, the brother of a store employee died by suicide shortly after visiting the shop and knocking the cabinet off the shelf. A couple of years later, the worker himself also took his own life. At this point, he put the item on eBay for sales in September 2001, and it was sold to Jason Haxton, director of the Museum of Osteopathic Medicine at A.T. Still University, who briefly sold it to a University of Missouri student named Lazif Nitska in June 2003 before rebuying it back eight months later. Nitska detailed strange things that happened to him while in possession of the box, everything from car troubles to strange smells to hair loss. Jason Haxton wrote about his experiences with this mysterious wine cabinet in a book called The Dybbuk Box. In the book, he details some of his unusual experiences with the box, including experiencing welts and hives as well as the dream of the hag when he first had the box. He also experienced coughing up blood and choking. While he had possession of the box, he had seen strange lights and shadows. Eventually, Haxton sold the box to Zach Bagans, the host of the television show Ghost Adventures, as part of his collection of paranormal objects in his haunted museum in Las Vegas. On Ghost Adventures, Quarantine, Manus gave Bagans a second, smaller Dybbuk box, saying there were a total of ten boxes hidden around the globe. Manus explained that Havla, along with a few other Jewish women, summoned an evil spirit to help the Jews fight against the Nazis during the Holocaust. But they couldn't control it, and so are forced to imprison essences of the evil spirit in each of the ten boxes, and that if all these ten boxes are brought together, it will unleash evil on a scale never seen before. Despite claims of a hoax, as Manus had come out publicly to say that the entire story about the Dybbuk box was nothing more than a creation of his, today it's one of the museum's highlights, touted as, the world's most haunted object. In order to see it, one needs to sign a waiver that releases Bagans from liability if anything bad happens to you while viewing the box or immediately after.